I too am really happy to be here and um, it's an honor to be here with people doing such great work and to get to share a little bit um, in a little bit more detail one of the projects that we've worked on at Iowa Health System I know that um, many of you know that we've worked on uh, health literacy for almost 10 years now and I thought what I would try to do today is to focus on our um, consent, our reader-friendly consent for surgery and procedure, and talk about that in the context of the attributes uh, of a health literate organization. Did I do something wrong? I thought it was a good idea. This, am I supposed to be using this? Yeah. There you go. Okay, here we go. Uh, <clears throat> so to set the stage, our consent work was put in the context of our health literacy work, which came from the Department of Clinical Performance Improvement. So it was a, a cross-cutting system-wide quality initiative that incorporated health literacy. The idea being um, that we would develop the end product, which was standardized reader-friendly consent forms in both English and Spanish to use within the framework of plain language, teach back, and other health literacy principles throughout the informed consent process. So it's not just the form and easy to read uh, papers, but to hopefully imp influence behavior and the consent process. And the consent would be available for use throughout the Iowa Health System, uh, the affiliate hospitals, uh, in accordance with their uh, local individual policies. And at this point, we now have about 10 senior hospitals, affiliate hospitals, and about 15 to 20 rural, uh, 500 physicians and clinical sites throughout Iowa and Illinois. The goals when we started this work were to develop a health literacy-based consent process using the reader-friendly consent document as the driving tool. Uh, we would use that as a strategy to help educate providers and staff about health literacy concepts, to promote patient understanding through plain language and teach back, to really optimize the whole culture of communication around the perioperative period, before, during, and after, and to build this collaboratively with our health literacy teams, adult learners, uh, the risk managers, healthcare providers, and our law department. This is where we began, uh, one of many, but sort of a generic consent that was at college level. Um, and not very inviting to look at. Um, over time, that has evolved into what we call our health literacy-based consent process that includes the surgeon-patient discussion, and hopefully they're using, uh, reinforced uh, to use and taught and educated how to use plain language during that discussion. Um, and then the reader-friendly consent form um, has reader-friendly uh, wording and format space for the patient to describe the procedure in their own words. In other words, a teach back element. Um, it incorporates the key elements of informed consent. Um, it includes plain language descriptions of other pieces of the consent process, like taking photographs, what happens to the tissue, et cetera. And a final reminder to ask questions before signing the form. And so the signature in the, at the end is the end, uh, not the driving course, uh, that's not the consent. And this is our current consent. Um, it's a one-page, two-sided document. Uh, the readability level is at seventh to eighth grade. As you can see, it uses good spacing, um, careful use of bullets and numbering, uh, selected use of, of bold text, and uh, directions to please read the form, ask what you don't understand, be sure you have your questions answered before you sign, and when you sign, you are giving permission. So this is where we um, concluded, sort of, our consent work. To get this work moving and originally, um, we took the old form and began revising it, and it took multiple, multiple drafts, and we used uh, input from the New Readers of Iowa, who are a group of adult learners, uh, the health literacy teams and others, that kept giving us feedback and telling us things that didn't make sense, things that needed to be changed, things that needed to be clarified. Uh, and so until we got that form really close to what we thought would be functional. Uh, key leaders, both formal and informal, were invited and involved up front and helped to kind of guide this early pilot work. 
We started with one hospital and one surgeon to really work the bugs out using small tests of change and adapted the process and figured out where we could have done a little better job as we worked through that process. The other thing we did was to make sure that that hospital and the team working on that wrote all those steps down so that that could be replicated, duplicated down the road. Um, and then that wound, um, evolved into informational meetings, uh, the written communication, and further training before the, the individual hospital would, would roll it out. So some of the things we looked at in this, this pilot testing were summaries. We wanted a cross-section of patients in terms of age, sex, race, ethnicity, what procedures they were having done, see if it took longer because people maybe actually were reading the consent form uh, to fill it out. And if it did, was that a problem? Um, did they like using it? Uh, did the staff like it? Did the nurses like it? Did patients like it? Were people able to teach back? And just one small... Um, Piece here, you can look at the original form, which is in the blue, and the reader-friendly form in the red. We saw a marked decrease, increase um, when the patient and family actually read the consent. It went from about 25% up to 90% of people actually read the consent form, as opposed to the decline in people saying, where do I sign, and not even bothering to look at the form. And the nurses, 95% uh, of them, were very happy with the new procedure, overcoming a little bit of concern that people may not like this new uh, thing and it might cause more trouble, more problems than we anticipated. Um, when we looked at it a little bit more formally, um, we saw increases anecdotally in the number of patients actually reading the form. We also saw a higher proportion of patients who were able to describe the surgery they were having done in their own words and improved comfort with asking questions. So they really felt like they were able to ask questions and invited to do so. And again, that the satisfaction with the new form and process were high. So as we continue to move that forward, that initial work was done about eight years ago. Um, we now have a supporting, we've helped each affiliate hospital continue to roll it out, tweaking it, uh, at the process. Um, there's a checklist for the individuals, groups, the committees that they want to make sure are involved up front so that they don't surprise anyone as they get ready to roll this out. Um, the education focus is not just on health literacy and teach back, but um, the tool, the consent form being a tool to verify patient understanding, and it's part of the process. It's not just a piece of paper. Even though we've got it kind of well, well worked out, well polished, we always tell the hospitals to do small tests of change to see what might not work quite well in their setting and to give them a chance to um, allay someone's concerns or, or fears. Uh, make sure that they're adapted for each of the hospitals because even though we're a system, we are not autocratic so that we have a lot of in independence at each affiliate and once more that it's a process and that it's the discussion is still the purview of the surgeon. So as I went through the list of attributes, I felt like we were hitting um, nine out of 10 of those. And I thought I'd walk you through a little bit more detail um, of what we did and highlight some of those points as we look at uh, the answers to those five questions. So the things that generated interest in this particular project within the context of our health literacy teams I think they just glommed on to that form and it grabbed several people as being outrageously hard to read. And is this really not, is this really an effective tool and does it really mean anything when people sign this form um, because it's obviously hard to read and are they undergoing surgery without fully understanding what they're um, about to undertake? Um, there was concern, they raised this concern, it bubbled up with our health literacy teams. Um, we were fortunate to have a member of the law department, the director of risk management on our um, health literacy collaborative. And she also recognized that the concern with those forms um, being written in a language that people may not understand or cannot read. She was aware of case law that involved a lack of communication, reflecting lack of informed consent. Clearly, that's a patient safety issue, and with the national focus on health literacy increasing, that helped to lend uh, credibility to this initiative. 
the NQF Safe Practices for Better Health Care that called for use of TeachBack and also for uh, improving the quality of consent documents, uh, Code of Medical Ethics, Joint Commission Standards, CMS Standards, all those things help put quiver, uh, arrows in the quiver to help move this particular issue forward. Uh, and she collaborated beautifully with our law department, uh, and they looked at national but also Iowa case law. They looked at the doctrine of informed consent, that patients have the right to participate in decisions about their own care. Um, they looked at court statements on informed consent and patient rights, and we were very fortunate that they would become very supportive of this initiative moving forward. So in terms of moving the... the, the this work forward. We had the support of the health system leaders and the law department. I think a really important piece that happened at the same time was to have an expert training, a two-day workshop, to really build our health literacy team's skills and knowledge and understanding of plain language written materials and to help them, even if they weren't experts at doing it, but to recognize it and say, yeah, this is an opportunity. This is where I think we could move. Uh, so revising the original form, the multiple revisions, and the involvement of the adult learners was paramount. Uh, again, that helped uh, allay or overcome concerns when people said, these are real people that say this is impossible to read, not just me telling you that. So as we continue this process, we have the ongoing support of the law department, continued work with new readers, um, we have key staff, providers, leaders at subsequent hospitals uh, who support it. The, the local team kind of figures out whether it's the OR director, the nurse manager, the medical staff director, who the right people are to pull it in to implement it in their uh, setting. And as I said before, we always have them do small tests and to document what they do there before they go out um, at, to their whole OR or their whole operative setting. And we have built tools, education, training, sort of step-by-step -step processes, and a little library of our consents on the internal website. And we've been able to expand it to other procedures as well. The facilitating factors included, again, focusing on health literacy, informed consent versus the form itself, and that it's patient-centered care. It's not just telling you to do something new. And having health literacy teams that could actually test it, implement it, and spread it helped tremendously. It didn't get added onto somebody's job that they're supposed to go do this new form. They had the support of people who either had knowledge and expertise or could find it to help do that work. We articulated health literacy as a system goal. Uh, we had multiple rounds of feedback and input from consumers. Um, it helped us to underscore the value of Teach Back. Uh, we gave those evaluation findings and shared those. And again, another theme, we related it to quality, patient safety, patient-centered care, risk management, um, and now, obviously, the transforming healthcare system. Barriers. Uh, the inertia was pretty minimal. Um, the lawyers were on our side for this, basically, but I hear that from other people or people that might be a little bit afraid to get started in the work. Competing priorities and all the other things going on in the healthcare delivery arena are true competitors for, for making changes that take some investment of time. Had a little bit of issue with some specialty-specific issues. People, well, we want our name or our practice name on the form. Um, the competing priorities, the time run together, and again, affiliate autonomy. Uh, we can't make people use it. So it's taken a little time. We had some very early adopters, and we're just getting sort of our last uh, senior hospital on board as we speak. Implem uh, sustaining this over time, I think the documented structured approach that can be replicated really does help to continue the work at additional hospitals. And it also allowed us to expand it to other procedures like radiology, PIC lines, um, consent for treatment, consent for blood transfusion, uh, things like that. It's become part of routine operations. Uh, one of the hospitals had over 100 condition-specific forms. So they looked at this from an efficiency piece. They were able to 
retire hundreds of forms, which back then they still had printed out, uh, to, um, to use this generic one. And then again, having those supporting resources on the intranet are, is very helpful. The evaluation showing the positive impact on patients' perception of communication and, and their consent process uh, was very favorable. And the fact that really nurses and physicians are very happy with the process have also supported sustaining this. So just to wrap up, um, I kind of have reinforced these key things. Leadership was very important, especially that of the law department. Um, using integrating health literacy into planning, quality, and patient safety, coupling that with national support, and being able to cite that uh, those references and those resources and those standards and, and guidelines were very helpful. Um, having that expert training to really jumpstart the teams was very helpful, but also having ongoing uh, tra uh, training and resources in preparing the workforce and keeping them prepared as there's turnover and new people on board. In terms of attributes four and five, the involvement of the new readers is, was really powerful, and using TeachBack as the key health literacy strategy was uh, vital and uh, for using health literacy strategies for attribute number six. Uh, in terms of navigation and access, I think the fact that people have been reading the form more helped people realize that that's a navigational issue and that we can see that that improves uh, their ability to, to navigate that particular aspect of care. I've highlighted the features that make the form reader friendly. And in terms of high risk situations, certainly giving true informed consent prior to a surgical procedure, I think is a high risk uh, situation and it certainly helps address that uh, concern. So with that, I want to thank the people that helped us with this work and have led it and continue to sustain it. Thank you.